it's very long for a scientific paper. Yeah. It's over 50 pages. He'd actually generated animals experimentally that would tolerate a skin graft from a genetically mm -hmm. different source. What I've tried to do in my review is to clarify the presentation of what experiments Peter did against the background of ideas that were current at that time. It's wonderfully written, it's very informative, but the other thing you realise reading it now is how primitive the tools that were available mm -hmm. for doing um, the, uh, science. All the things that you take for granted now, all the kits that people buy to do things, just weren't available then. You couldn't chop up DNA. You understood genetics in terms of DNA as described by Watson and Crick and as described by the inheritance of, 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 of phenotypes and, and, and diseases, but to, to nothing like the extent to which we, uh, we do now. Peter was the person who happened to publish, first of all, the paper in Nature in 1953, where the essence of the results were uh, presented. The number of animals that uh, he reported in that paper was so small and the numbers showing the phenomenon of tolerance that he was um, particularly wanting to try and experimentally establish were tiny and you'd have to be a real visionary to be able mm -hmm. to interpret them. He was. Yeah. I felt he had the capacity for seeing the pattern in the porridge. Those ideas came together and Peter did the key experiments and he wrote about them in this very much longer paper in 1956, where the topic was really explored to look at um, mechanisms. And for these experiments, Peter won the Nobel Prize, so it really was pioneering work. It was, but he, he, did it, he won the prize jointly with, um, with Burnett. What work led on from this paper? Well, it was in two fields, really. Basic immunology, because there were lots of questions to still um, that were not understood, the mechanisms weren't understood of um, tolerance and whether it, it could be, particularly whether it could be applied to adults was an important question clinically mm -hmm. um, because transplant surgeons uh, were ready to do um, things like kidney transplants and Peter was, um, he certainly engaged the attention of those people as well as those doing bone marrow transplants. It's not just transplantation that's important for uh, better understanding the immune response. Um, it's treatment of cancer, some of which is um, susceptible to um, immunological stimulation, and there are some encouraging results to suggest that this is so, um, but also in developing vaccines, mm -hmm. um, where you won't want to optimize the immune responses. So I think it's, it's relevant in all of these areas. What was it like working with Peter then? It was a huge pleasure. Um, he was surrounded by colleagues who enjoyed both his ideas and his personality, um, who were prepared to work as hard as he did. Um, he was, although he was director of the institute, he still spent two and a half whole days doing bench science a week. And he was interested in a lot of things other than science as well. And um, all of those aspects of his education and interests wove themselves into his everyday life and he wanted to share those with his colleagues um, and so he infected us all. Um, so it was fun working with him. At the same time the way in which he wrote about his work and interacted with people who were colleagues and competitors ensured that those ideas were so exciting that they spread to other people. And I think that that contributed to the explosive growth of cellular immunology. In the um, abstract, I do write about the way it's illustrated, but I also say that Peter's prose illuminates almost as much as the pictures themselves. He's very, his descriptions are very visually compelling. It's brilliant. But those are, those are, are great. And um, he gave me this paper to Liz from Peter when he was clearing out his office. And this is one of Peter's books? And this is one. He wrote a lot of books um, for um, the lay public. 
And um, I thought the title of this one was um, really exemplified mm. um, his um, um, feelings about science and how science could be used, that there was always hope of progress. So the hope of progress is what drove him on with both science and uh, the possibility of applying this to clinical medicine.